we're going to take a look at how we can approximate area under curves. So, so far we've been looking at a lot of how we'd find the slope of a tangent line. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to look at finding areas under a curve and approximating them. So I've got a curve here. This would be the line y equals 3 that I have here. And um, if I said find the area under the curve from 0 to 6, so here's 6 and here's x is 0. If I said find this area underneath this curve, so under the curve and bounded by the x-axis and between 0 and 6, you'd have no problem doing that because that shape is simply a rectangle. And of course, area is of a rectangle is length times width. And our length across here is 6. And our width of our rectangle is 3. 6 times 3 is 18. So the area underneath this curve, no problem, 18 units squared, whatever our units might be. And we can even do a question like this. Let's assume these units are all 1 as well. And let's say we're going to also go from 0 to 6. So we want the area under this curve from 0 to 6. Well, we could also find the exact area under this curve by splitting this area up into two parts. A rectangle here I'll call A1. And area 2 is a triangle. And so if I simply add the area of that rectangle and I add the area of that triangle, I would get exactly the area underneath this line. So A1 is a rectangle and its area can be found by going length times width, which is 2 times, two times 6 or 6 times 2, which is 12. And then A2 is a triangle, which of course is base times height divided by 2. The base of this triangle is 6. The height of this triangle oops, goes from 2 all the way up to 8, so the height is also 6. Divided by 2, 6 times 6 is 36. 36 divided by 2 is 18. So if we take 18 and add 12, we would get a total area of 30. So those two are no problem. We could find the area just using our simple shapes from geometry. But what if we had the good old parabola, y equals x squared, and we wanted to find the area under this, say from 0 to 2. So this area under here. We don't have any geometry formula for a funny curve like this. So how could we approximate the area under that curve? Well, what we could do is we could we could um, make some rectangles. We could divide this shape. So we know how to find the area of the rectangles. We could divide this shape up into, this curve up here, into uh, a number of rectangles. Let's say in this case, we're going to divide this thing up into two rectangles. So this is going to be rectangle 1 from here to here. And this is going to be rectangle 2 that goes from 1 to 2. So I'm going to have some rectangle coming up here and some rectangle coming up here. Now the question is going to be is how high should we make the rectangle? So what should be the height of the rectangle in this first interval? Well, we could do a few things. We could decide to, to take, make the height the left endpoint on this on this width. We could do the midpoint or we could do the right end point. On this one let's decide that we're going to do the right end point. So the height, whoops, the height of this first rectangle will make equal to the y value at the far right end of the rectangle. So that means that this rectangle is going to have a height like so. And then rect, so the rect, this we'll call this A1 for area 1. And then area 2, let's put it in here, A1 
area two will have a height equal to its right endpoint. So it looked like so. And then the area of this rectangle plus the area of this rectangle would be an approximation for the area under this curve from zero to two. So then A1, that's no problem. Base is one, it's a rectangle, so length times width. And the, the, the length is one, or the base is one, and the height is one. So one times one, which is one. A2, length times width, its length is one, its height is four. So that gives an area of four. And then we can say that A1 plus A2 is one plus four, which is five. So we could say our approximation for the area under this curve is five. Now you might say, well, that's ridiculous because that's way more than what the area is. These rectangles are much bigger than this curve. And you'd be right. So what could we do to make this um, more accurate? Well, what, what we could do is we could say, instead of finding the area of two rectangles, why don't we make, say, four rectangles under the curve? Let's, let's see what happens when we do that. So here's the same curve again. Let's split this thing up into four rectangles. So if we take this interval from zero to two, from zero to two, and we split it up into four rectangles, then the width of each of these is going to be two divided by four. So this is two. I'm going to divide that into four pieces. So each width is going to be a half. So this would be a half. There's one. This would be one and a half. And there's two. And we'll stick with the right end point again. So there's our height for our first rectangle. Here's our second rectangle. There, the height of the rectangle will be equal to the right end point. the right end point and the right end point. So this gives us four areas now, A1, A2, A3, and A4. So A1 is going to be base times height, so a half is our, our, um, our length and our height is also a half. A half times a half is one quarter. So A1 is one quarter. A2 would be a half times one. Oops, yeah, one half. A3 would be base, which is a half. Notice how the bases here are always the same, right? Because we're splitting up into the same width rectangle. So one half times two, which is one. And A4 is one half times four, which is two. And so then the total area would be a quarter plus a half plus one plus two, which would be three and three quarters, or an improper fraction, 15 fourths. So three and three quarters, that's a little bit less than five, all right. But you'd say, well, we're still, we're still over. We've got uh, quite a bit of pieces here that are, that are bigger. So maybe we decide we're going to go with eight rectangles. Let's double it again. So if I take the total width here, which is two, and I divide it by eight, then each width here is going to be a quarter. And that's going to be a bit tricky. Because my scale, I only did six here. Let's um, just give me a second here. I'm going to change my graph. Okay, I changed it so that um, this first unit is eight grid squares away, which makes it easy to split this up into the fourths here now, just so I can show you. So here would be one fourth, two fourths, 
three fourths five six seven and eight fourths so my first rectangle would look like so a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 and a8 and um, so if we added up these eight rectangles then the area under the the sum of those areas would approximate the area under our curve and you can see we're getting less and less um, pieces above the uh, above the curve so the more rectangles we would put underneath here the better our approximation of the area would be um, I'm not going to go through and do this one because this will take a bit of time, but you can imagine A1. I'll just show you the first one here. So A1, the width is a quarter. And then the height would be this Y value right here. Well, we would need to calculate it, but we know that Y is equal to X squared. So one quarter, if I put one quarter in for X and squared, I would get the Y value over here, which would be 1 16th. So the first one here is... 1 64th would be the area of that rectangle. And then A2 would be the width, which is a quarter, times the height. Now the height of this rectangle would be 1 half, that's the x value, so 1 half squared would be 1 quarter. So we have 1 16th for A2. And then we would simply add all these up and get our, our sum. So 1 one way to improve our accuracy is to put more and more rectangles under under our curve. Another way we might decide to improve our accuracy for approximating the area under this curve is, remember back up here, I said when we're selecting the height of our rectangles, we could use the left endpoint or the midpoint or the right endpoint, and we chose to do the right endpoint. What if we chose to make our height equal to the midpoint of that interval? So let's go back and we'll do this same thing again where we're going to split the interval up into four rectangles. Let's do that here with this one. So four rectangles. So my first one is going to end here. My second one will end here. My third one will end here. My fourth one will end here. But now... So this would be a half, this would be one, this is one and a half, that's two. So now when I'm gonna when I'm gonna determine how tall this first rectangle is, I'm gonna make the height equal to the midpoint of that interval. So that way there's a little bit overestimation here, but then it's underestimating on this piece. In this rectangle, then we'll do the same thing. So the midpoint is gonna be our height. So that rectangle would look like that. This rectangle would look like this, and this rectangle would look like this. So here's A1, here's A2, here's A3, and here's A4. So to find the area of A1, it's, of course, length times width. These are all rectangles. So the length... The length of this thing is a half. Now, what's the height going to be? Well, the height is equal to, remember, this is our equation here, y equals x squared. That's the function of this curve. The height of this thing is going to equal whatever f of one quarter is. So here's a half. So the midpoint of this interval is going to be at a quarter. When I put a quarter in for x and square that, I get 1 16th. So this will be the height of this rectangle. So I get 1 32nd for the area of A1. The area of A2, of course, another rectangle, length times width. The length, no problem. These lengths are all a half. Every one of these has a width of a half. But the height, 
is going to equal the y value that we get at the middle of this interval. So this was a half, this was one, so this would be 3 quarters in the middle. And 3 quarters squared is 9 sixteenths. Square the 3, square the 4. So this becomes 9 32s. A3, the width is a half. The height of this thing will be 1 and a quarter, or 5 fourths, would be this x value here in the middle of this rectangle. So 5 fourths squared is 25 sixteenths. which puts this at 25 30 seconds. And a 4 has a width of a half, and its height would be at 1 and 3 quarters, which is the same thing as 7 fourths. And 7 fourths squared is 49 sixteenths. So multiplying those fractions together, gives me this. Oops. So then the area will equal the sum of A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, which is 132 plus 932 plus 25.32 plus 49.32. So that would give us 49 and 1 makes 50, 75, 84, 84 32s, which is 2 and 20 32s, or 2 and 10 sixteenths, or 2 and 5 eighths, so less than 3. So a little bit less than three, and you can see that this is a this would probably be a better approximation if we're just going to use four rectangles on this curve, because here we have a little bit um, overestimation, but on this part of the curve we have a little bit of underestimation, and so those two approximately would would negate each other. So our approximation for the area under this curve would be two and five-eighths using that method of rectangles. So for approximating area under the curve, we can do some rectangles. We can decide whether we're going to do midpoints or left endpoints or right endpoints for heights. And we can decide how many rectangles we want to do to approximate the area. And we understand that the more rectangles we choose, so by choosing eight rectangles, this would be a better approximation than if we just did four, and certainly than if we just did two. So that's how we can approximate area under curves by representing the area by a sum of rectangles.